the sages in the Gemara, they show us where you find hinted in the Torah, Haman, Mordechai, and Esther. Haman, they say, is hinted in the tree of knowledge of good and bad. When, after partaking from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and bad, and Adam and Eve were trying to hide themselves from Hashem, so to speak, right? Like the, like is depicted in the book, the, the Parsha of Bereshit, in Genesis. So Hashem said, why are you guys afraid? Why are you hiding? Why, why Could it be that, that you ate from the tree that I told you not to eat of? Did you eat from the tree? And Hashem's question is written, Hamina etz, Hashem amarti lachem. Could it be ham, that from, Hamin is that from the tree that I told you not to eat of, did you eat from? So the word Hamin, that from, is also the same letters as Haman. And they learn from this, the sages, that Haman is hinted in the actual concept of the tree of knowledge of good and bad. And Haman being the confusion generated by this confusion, by this admixture, sorry, of the good and bad found in the tree of knowledge of good and bad being mixed together, where it's so hard to separate and differentiate between the good and the bad in this level of wisdom. This is the idea of Haman. Esther, they say, is brought down at the end of the Chumash, towards the end, where Hashem says that in time, before the end of days, before Mashiach comes, it says Hashem's status is Vanuchi Haster Astir Panai Bayomahu. Hashem says, and I will conceal, and a double concealment. Again, I will conceal twice my countenance on that day. Hashem talks about the prophecy of the future time, which is this time before the coming of Mashiach, that Hashem's, so to speak, countenance of guidance and providence and kindness is concealed in a double concealment. Haster Astir. Haster of a hay. And the second one, Astir, I will make concealed. And the words Astir are grammatically similar to Esther, which is Astir means I will conceal. And that's the idea of Esther. Esther is the concealment. Like she was taken in captivity into the house of the palace of Achashverosh, hidden from society. So too, that Hashem also, in a sense, will be concealed before Mashiach comes. So these are two words from the actual Bible. Mordechai, however, is rooted in the Aramaic Targum translation of the verse listing the fragrances and spices used to make the anointing oil. This is in Parashat, coming up, God willing, in Parashat Kitisa. So it says there, Mordoror, of the fragrances, talks about pure mir. I think it's spelled M-Y-R-R-H-E if I'm properly spelling it right. Mir. Mor in Hebrew, which is mir. A type of uh, fragrance. But doror. Doror means free of any additives. Pure. Pure mor. So now, the Ankulus, the Aramaic translation renders mor doror as mare dachya. That's the Aramaic translation of this fragrance. Mor is mare. Dachya means clean, pure, untainted. And this, they say, is the hint of Mordechai. So what's interesting, Haman and Esther, the sages give us a proof from the actual wording of the Bible itself in the holy tongue, the holy language. And yet Mordechai is hinted in the Torah, but indirectly, not through the actual holy tongue, the holy language, but of the Aramaic translation of the verse. Why? Why does Mordechai stick out to be hinted to by the sages in the Aramaic translation as opposed to Haman and Esther? What's going on here? This shows the power of Mordechai. Mordechai was able to enter the world of Targum. Targum, similar to the tree of knowledge of good and bad, is an admixture. To explain, Rabbi Nachman explains in Lesson 19 that you have the holy tongue, and then you have the tongue of the 70 nations, the language of the 70 nations, which is totally impure. And you have an in-between language called the Targum. Targum, Aramaic, is an admixture of the good from the holy language and evil from the from the 70, the, 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 the languages of the 70 nations, which are considered impure 
vis-a-vis in relationship to the holy tongue. Aramaic is this admixture, and because it's so woven in together, it is a major battle to sift the, and, and remove the evil influence from the pure, from the, from the holy. This is the main work of every Jew since the time of the sin of the eating of the, of the tree of knowledge of good and bad, that we have all become tainted with this admixture of good and bad, so we need to combat in the area of Targum. This is where Mordechai comes in. Mare Dachya means to give Marut. The word Mare means myrrh, this type of fragrance, but also means Marut, which means rulership, control, self-control. Okay, self-confidence, self-control. Dachya, free, clean from the evil. That Mordechai the Tzaddik, his job is to help every Jew in this personal battle of separating the good from the bad to do the job right. This is why Mordechai is hinted specifically in Aramaic as opposed to Haman and Esther were hinted to in the whole in, in the actual Bible itself, the Chumash itself. Mm-hmm.